Hi everyone, Dr. Brian Stein here at Wilkins Final Care in Mount Pleasant. This week we're going to start talking a little bit more about the extremities of the spine. So what are extremities? Extremities are anything that aren't the spine. Uh, your hip, your knee, your hands, wrists, elbows, so on and so forth. I'm going to discuss all these different types of extremities throughout the several weeks. This week though we're going to talk about the hip. Now a lot of people think here the hip is right here. That's not your hip, that's your pelvis. Your hip is down here. This is your hip, this is the head of the femur, and it goes inside this little cup called the acetabulum. The hip is a very, very powerful joint because it contains ligaments, tendons, muscles, everything binding together. So it's really hard to almost dislocate a hip. Now, can a hip be dislocated? Yes, but it creates a lot, a lot of force. The hip is a very important joint because it does a couple different things. It allows us to create movements in all directions. It's a ball and socket joint, so that means it can go in flexion, extension, rotation movements, back and forth. It has all these different motions. Another very important function of the hip is it has all the weight-bearing forces. It's a shock absorber. So we talked about the disc several, several blogs back about disc being shock absorbers. The hip is the same way. So that is a very, very important joint. It's perhaps one of the most important joints, not saying all joints are not important, but this one is exceptionally important. Just like anything else, any bone in the body, any joint in the body, the hip can have different common disorders that can be affected by it. Some of the most common ones which are in this blog are degenerative joint disease, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis. So, and there's more. These are just a couple different things I'm gonna explain. So degenerative joint disease, like we've explained in the past, it's a joint. So over time, the joint begins to have wear and tear because of the repetitive motions that we've had, some sort of trauma, vice versa. Again, typically these things happen later in life, but if you do a lot of wear and tear, you can have a degenerative joint disease hip in a very short amount of time. Um, another one, osteoarthritis, same thing. Arthritis is a very common thing that we see in older patients. It's due through wear and tear that we see throughout a lifetime. How do you manage these patients? The same way we would manage any patient in chiropractic care. Now, another common disorder in the hip is bursitis. That's something we haven't talked about yet. Bursitis comes from a, a different anatomy of the body. It's called the bursa. It's a fluid-filled sac. That's almost like a cushion for when you're moving. So bursitis is when the bursa has become inflamed. Now, this is the one exception to what I talked about last week's blog, is heat and ice. In bursitis, it's inflammation. However, you wanna have heat in a bursitis case because it promotes a lot of blood flow. There's almost no blood flow in the bursa. You wanna get blood flow to that area to help with that bursa. Now, one last common thing that I wanna talk about that I didn't explain in the blog on the conditions page is something called nerve interference. And that is something we've talked about in the past. What is nerve interference? It's the same thing that a chiropractor does in a subluxation case that we talked about in the past, an arthritis condition, an osteoarthritis. A nerve interference is when a bone has rotated and it puts pressure on a nerve. It could be coming from the spine. These nerves, wherever we're at, run down to the hip. Again, these nerves control everything in the body. This nerve controls down here, vice versa, it goes all the way down the legs. So we're going to adjust the lumbar spine. That will help with hip pain. Now obviously if we're seeing someone who has more severe problems, the numbness, the tingling, um, having a lot, a lot of pain, can't do anything, organ malfunction, yeah, that might be a, a cause for decompression or even neuropathy cases. So we have many, many different things that can help with the hip. But we're going to treat a hip patient just like we would a spine patient. There's absolutely no difference. You're just adjusting a different area. You're looking a little bit deeper into another area. Now, one more thing I'm going to explain before I end this blog. Do chiropractors believe in hip replacements? I will, I'm not gonna testify for every chiropractor, but me and Dr. Wilkins will tell you, if we think you need a hip replacement, we're gonna tell you you need a hip replacement. So, I'm not just gonna look at a patient's x-ray and say, man, that hip is terrible, I can fix that. No, if I think someone eventually needs a hip replacement, I'm gonna tell them that. And in about 50% of cases, someone who has a unilateral hip replacement will eventually need the other hip replaced. Not always, but it is a very common thing that we see. 
Now, can we adjust people with hip replacements? Yes, absolutely. And they thank us for referring them to an orthopedic surgeon to help with that hip replacement. And then we obviously have to manage and re-educate them because now they have a new hip. And so the spines can be different. We're gonna take new x-rays, we're gonna adjust, we're gonna do everything that we can to do to get the patient better. So that's all I have for you this week on the hip. Um, through the weeks, I'm going to talk a little bit more about different different regions of the back or different regions of extremities, knees, feet. Um, we'll get into elbows, wrist, all that stuff. Um, but that's all I have for you guys this week. Enjoy the nice weather we're having. If you having, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and give me a call. Have a great day.